Hey, Joe Solari here. Thanks for joining me. In today's session, we're going to be talking with Ben and John from ReaderLinks about their ReaderLinks product and how it could help you. It's a long interview. We go over a lot of stuff, and I think if you go through the whole thing, you're going to hear a lot of really good commentary, not just talking about their products, but us talking about the industry as a whole. Now, the guys have also done something really cool. They've provided a special coupon code for watchers of this uh, blog. The code is going to be shown here right now. It's um, Business of Writing 2018. You can use that to get a, a screaming deal on their product. The nice thing is they have a 15-day uh, trial period to get a feel for the product, but after that you can use this code and you can get it for as low as nine bucks a month. Uh, I tell you that up front, um, I don't like doing it where, hey, wait till the end and you'll get the code. There's your code. I think that if you stick around and watch through the video, you're gonna learn a lot of stuff and uh, be uh, better versed with using their product. And we do talk a lot about other stuff, kind of the general feel that they have for the industry, uh, some tips and tricks that um, they've used to help with their book marketing. And uh, a lot of the reasons why they ended up creating the product, because it really is a product designed by authors for authors. Um, again, that code is Biz of Writing 2018 if you decide you want to use their product. But let's get into the interview. All right. Um, it's Joe Solari here with the Business of Writing, and I'm here with John and Ben from ReaderLinks. That's Hello. Right. And um, today we're going to talk about their uh, product. How, how long has it been out now, officially launched? Uh, it's been out basically since January. I think January 1st is when we started hitting the promotion button. Does that, does that sound about right, John? Yeah, it was we, kind we of a soft launch. Mark Dawson. Yeah, it was a soft launch in November. Yeah. Um, uh, so we kind of kept it under the radar a little bit and just, you know, because once you launch software, you know it's going to break. Uh, <laughs> and, and it did. Um, so so uh, we, we had a lot of uh, fixes to, to go with. We had an, an exclusive uh, going with uh, Mark Dawson, um, and uh, that uh, ended at the end of uh, December. December, yeah. And uh, I mean, we were still letting people in, but but he had a, uh, a thing, you know, that was going on for coupons and stuff like that. So, uh, okay. um, so we did that until the end of December. And then uh, January 1st, we started opening the doors uh, a little bit more, but we're still being a little bit cautious about yeah. uh, floodgates because we know we have a lot to work on. Yeah. So. Sure, sure. Well, and, uh, you know, I think the other thing with software in this space is it's not like it's a, you know, a really mature space. Nobody, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. like, well, we're just going to take this guy's ideas and like add 10%. It's, there's <laughs> yeah, uh, that's exactly right. I mean, that's, that's why it kind of it came from you know, our own needs, which is mm -hmm. why I think, uh, you know, we came out of the gate with a whole bunch of different tools because, you know, that's what we needed as authors. Well, let's yeah, start. Why don't we start right there and tell us yeah. about like that early genesis, like because I I could tell just from looking at it initially, it's clearly you were like, this is what I need. Yeah. Nobody's got it. Yeah. Tell, tell me that story. So yeah. it, it started out with um, uh, basically I'm a software engineer. Um, I've been doing it forever, 1980 something, and um, <laughs> essentially when I got into the writing space, you know, Ben had. Uh, gone there first. He kind of pioneered it for me. And then I, I followed in his footsteps a little bit and started learning from him. But then I started going, man, this, there's a lot to do as, as an author trying to manage all this crap. And so um, I, I ended up going, I'm going to write a little tool that manages this little piece for me. Uh, so I don't have to do this every single time. And that little piece happened to be, I was dealing with Bitly because this was before things like Booklinker and such. And so I was dealing with Bitly and every time I would create a link for one of my books, it would just go into this long list of links. Mm. And, you know, I had multiple books. And so I, I have, you know, 20 links for each one of my books. And then I'm trying to find them and how are they doing? And I have to share this link over here. I had no idea where it was. No, no big picture stuff at all. It's all yeah. little tiny bits of data. And even mm. worse than that, uh, every time I would publish a book to mm -hmm. Amazon and I had a Bitly link in the back of it, um, I had to wait for the ASIN number and then I had to go back in and create another link and then republish the book because you can't change bitly links. Um, and so 
anyway, uh, that was a pain. <laughs> so I had that pain point. So I ended up writing this thing uh, that did links. It didn't have any geolink capability at the time. It just went to Amazon.com. But anyway, so I started with that. And um, then I said, hey, guys, uh, you know, it's a, a group of, of guys that I work with. And I said, check this out. Do you want to use these links? And you can put it per book. So that way you can just go into your book and you can see all the links for that book. If you needed to create a new one, you just created it for that. It was really ugly, really, um, uh, you know, programmery. Um, <laughs> but they were like, oh, this is so fantastic. It was like Craigslist, basically. It looked like Craigslist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now it looks like Craigslist 2.0. Uh, <laughs> but, but we're working on that. But um, And then I started, I realized, okay, in order to get more people, I had to go into Twitter. And this was Twitter, a few years yeah. ago. That was the so second was, tool. Yeah. yeah, so I started doing it. I was in Twitter for two hours a day, tweeting and following and doing all this crap. And then I said, you know what? I can do some of this, but I wish there was a way this thing would just do it. So I found out, I found their API. I started coding up this thing and I made this auto tweeter thing. And the next thing the guys are using that. Well, anyway, the, all of these things start to evolve and then the amalgamation of it starts coming together. And, and we said, why don't we just make a system so yeah. we don't have to deal with this in, you know, using spreadsheets for this and, and mm -hmm. yeah. for that. John, and blah, blah, yeah. blah. When and John and I, then, that's what happened. Exactly. So it's like when, when John uh, did, when, when we started to work together as authors, um, there was a lot of, uh, uh, there was this sense of being overwhelmed. And so it was funny because while I left the job, we used to work in the same job and I left it uh, before John did and started to write. And I just, I, I, but I still had that software development thing in my head, the product manager brain. And mm -hmm. so I was like, always be thinking this has got to be an easier way and he came up with these tools and I and I started to pencil stuff out and and you know hold it up to the screen or you know take it, and we just started talking and he'd be you know he'd say yeah that's cool or no that's not happening that time um, and and it was it was fun we had a lot of fun with it and so while he was doing that you know we were both coming up with these ideas about what we could come up with to, to deal with all of these not just marketing pain points but organizational um, publishing pain points, um, social media stuff, of course, um, that it, 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 it ended up being kind of chaotic beginning that kind of settled down as we got more, more authors using his tools. And then uh, it, 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 kind of, it became reader links. Mm -hmm. So based on where it is, is today, what would you say is like the, the, the top problems that you feel that you're resolving for authors with the big product. picture. Yeah. Big picture. Big. That's I mean, that's, that's the, the, with the ability to, to dig deep and, and mm -hmm. see stuff, uh, see what's working and what isn't. Mm -hmm. Cause I think one of the things that, you know, any business needs to know is what is working and what isn't. And you have to be able to act on that quickly. Sure. Uh, and so the, the it, it's cool. There are a lot of services out there that give you big picture on revenue um, one of the things that I love about reader links is it gives me the big picture on what links I'm using that are working and what's actually being clicked on. So I can actually see in reader links, you know, that there's been a big spike in, in um, links, uh, mm -hmm. clicks on my links. Um, you know, where's that coming from? And I can go out and do a little bit of research and find out that I got a, you know, reviewed on a blog or I got mentioned on a Facebook page or something like that. And that's, that's very helpful. It helps me find friends. It helps me find reviewers. Um, and it helps increase the sales. So we, we, we give the big picture on the sales revenue front, uh, the ROI front when it comes to Facebook uh, ads and Amazon ads. Um, you, can, you can actually uh, uh, import those, those reports and get a big picture on the ROI. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also gives you really good insights into, into links. Plus, if you use our... Uh, WordPress plugin, which allows you to use your own domain uh, for reader links. So in other words, there it's like using Bitly, except it says benzacom.com slash books, you know, slash the Camelot kids, whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, that it, it's, it becomes a vanity uh, link. Um, and those are very friendly on the Google Analytics front. So you can actually get some good data from Google Analytics. Oh, uh, okay. So... And, no, if you use the, and if you use the WordPress plugin, you can also put a Facebook pixel on that page. And if you put it on your uh, WordPress page, your Facebook pixel, that's also going to help you when you start doing lookalike audiences for advertising and such. So that's yeah. also really important. So yeah. it, it, so let, let me just make sure I understand that part because that's pretty, pretty serious shit. It's right? heady, heady stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but, but like, um, so like one of the things I do, um, 
where I have, you know, a Facebook pixel on my thank you page for when people sign up for my newsletter. Right. Mm -hmm. So like I can go back down that rabbit hole or up that rabbit hole and see where things are coming from. So you're saying that it would create a, a landing page on my domain that would be pixeled. So, okay. So whenever you're doing anything with a, a Facebook pixel at this point, they only offer the single pixel. And then what you do is you can dive deeper by saying what URLs belong to a particular segment of that pixel. Right. Right. So um, what happens is you would use the reader links uh, WordPress plugin and you create a page specifically for that, which just has a, um, a code on it. Um, and you, you type in that code and that's all you have on that page. So you don't have anything else on there or anything. Uh, except for, I'm assuming when you're doing your WordPress pixel, you have something, you know, some plugin that, that actually injects that pixel for you. That pixel should be on all of your pages. It shouldn't right, just right, right. be on that one, right? Mm -hmm. So when a person clicks on one of your reader links links, okay. it goes to, you know, youauthor.com slash whatever that page was that you came up with. So let's say it's book or I, mine is L for link, right? Because I want to keep it as short a link as possible. Um, so let's say it's book and then slash one, two, three, four is your ID for that particular link. What it'll do is it'll go to that page and you can control the milliseconds for how long you want that page to delay to make sure that pixel gets fired. Okay. Right? Um, and then it lands on that page. It asks reader links through behind the scenes. What's the URL I should give this particular person who clicked this link so I can send them to the proper location. While it's doing that and building that link information out, Facebook pixel has had time to fire to tell Facebook something has happened. And then the link goes off to, you know, wherever it's supposed to go, Amazon or Apple or whatever. Now, what's cool about that is <clears throat> you go into your segment and you can say, okay, uh, like I have a book called The Merging. So I can take the links from The Merging and I can create a segment called Lookalike Merging or Merging Lookalike, whatever you want, right? Mm -hmm. And then I pop all of those links into there. And now I can say, I want to do a lookalike audience for just that, those set of links. Mm -hmm. And so since all the links are coming through your website, the pixel will pick up what the, the URL is and it will go ahead and tell Facebook, this has happened for this particular pixel and so on. That's mm -hmm. how you could utilize that. And I'm mm -hmm. sure that was really freaking complicated. <laughs> no, no, but I, well, no, I think you did a good job explaining that, but I, it's just, uh, it's really interesting to me because I think there you know, one of the things as an author you face is you, what you'd love to know is like, when I, when I spent a dollar on this ad, did I get a purchase from it? Like, yeah. and you can't do that with Amazon, right? No. But you're, what you just explained to me in my head gets me super, super close, yeah. right? Exactly. I don't know if they've actually purchased, but I know no. that I could connect that to an ad and know that I at least got the person we spent that I spent that dollar on to get to go click on that link. Yep. Yep. Now here's the other thing <clears throat> that um, you know a lot of people don't know. You probably know this, but a lot of people don't. And that is that you look at your Facebook um, uh, uh, ads sheet, and it basically tells you, oh, I've had ten clicks today on this particular thing at you know forty cents a click or whatever. Mm -hmm. And but then you go into your reader links and you look at that exact same link that they're clicking from your ad, and it says. 70 clicks and you're going, oh, wait, that doesn't jive. The, the, why, those, yeah, why is reader link, why is yeah. reader link showing so many more clicks than Facebook? And the reason for that is because I liked your ad, which means everybody on my timeline saw it. Mm. But when Ben clicks your ad from my timeline, that's not a registered click against you because he'd have the Amazon would have to, or I'm sorry, Facebook would have to charge you for mm -hmm. Ben's click which they can't do because they didn't serve the ad to Ben. I liked it and therefore it showed up on his page. Oh, wow. Right? If I share the ad, all of my friends see it. But all, if, if 20 of my friends click it, you don't get charged for those 20 clicks because they yeah. didn't serve the ad. I serve the ad. Mm -hmm. So Reader Links is actually giving you a realistic click through information mm. point, and they're giving you what you paid for each click. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah, no, so, I get it. And so yeah. that's good because that does even more for you because what that does is every time a person clicks even on share, mm -hmm. you're getting that as a pixel hit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can actually see that information, which is why we like our chart because it shows you your clicks up and down, you know, the graph up and down. Yeah. 
against the ROI, against the, the sales that you got from, from KDP and so on. Uh -huh. And so that's why we, you know, wanted to incorporate that, that graph of the, the links with it. Yeah, and that's actually shown me that certain promotions I've done have not been working, you know, uh, because the, the link spike goes way high and the sales just kind of aren't going anywhere. So it, it just helps you see things, yeah. you know. And yeah, that, that's, that's really interesting because um, – so one of the things that I, I've got a, um, a pen name that I write fiction underneath um, that I'm using for checking out a lot of the things that I do that I'm working with clients on. And um, some of the ads that I've run for that, the, the most powerful ones are the ones that have that social aspect where, you know, the person that sees that is sharing with other people. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I know what that is, wor is worth to me, right? But what you're saying is you could actually demonstrate that even better, right? Mm -hmm. Like you would actually be able to track those clicks that I can't, I can't, I can see comments, right? I can see likes and shares, but I can't see that, you know, Timmy's 20 friends also clicked on it. Yeah, the, the viral aspect of yeah, it. No, that's, it, that's super it, powerful. It is. Well, and it's also something else to think about from a business standpoint as an author. I, I see a lot of authors, I've spoken with a lot of authors who said, I don't understand this. I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm getting this ad and, and people are sharing it. They're liking it. I'm getting sales, but it's, it's costing me like 40 cents or 60 cents a click. And um, when I look at the number of clicks I'm getting, it's, it's only like 10 clicks, but I'm getting way more sales than that. I'm getting, you know, more, it's because of the sharing aspect of it, but they still constantly think, yeah, but why am I spending so much? Conversely, I see other authors who are super excited about the fact that they're getting 10 cents a click on an ad. And then I say, great, how's it converting? Oh, I haven't had any sales yet. No sales yet. <laughs> why the hell do you care about the 10 cents a click? Yeah. But. So, in other words, I guess what I'm trying to say here is I, I don't put as much, look, if it goes over a dollar a click, you know, in my, there's a problem. There's and a problem, I try yeah. to keep it around 50 cents as the max. And, and most of mine do better than that. But I'm more interested in conversions than I am in paying and worrying about CPC. If I can improve my CPC, fine. But what I've found is that when I go to improve my CPA, CPC, I tend to screw up the ad and then my conversions go down. Mm -hmm. So, leave it alone. And yeah, okay, my, my CPC is a little higher, but if I'm converting better because of that ad and I'm getting better social share, if you get social share, it's so much more valuable than just a single person clicking it because that means the person clicked it, they went and bought it, and then they went, this is really cool, and they shared that with all of their friends. Now, I might get 10 more clicks out of that that I'm not paying for. Mm, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Well, and most like you know, there if you... You, look, you mentioned a lookalike audience. If somebody you targeted in that lookalike audience, pretty good chance that they're hanging out with, uh, you know, people that are have an even higher affinity than Facebook knows, right? right. You follow, right? Like because yeah. in, in my case where I'm writing steampunk, um, guess what? The guy that clicks on that that likes that ad probably is in a steampunk group in, in Boston and yeah, he's going to exactly. share it with his, his, yeah. his guild, right? Like so um, – I, I totally get that. So I, um, I know you guys are, you know, you, you're treating this like a business, um, the authorship thing. And I see you got some other stuff in there, like uh, the calendar function and um, different features. Uh -huh. Tell me what you're thinking as far, like, so it, to put the, this question in context, one of the things that I see a lot of authors struggling with is understanding the cost of their business, right? Mm -hmm. they, get, they get really obsessed with like what ads cost, but they don't think about like, okay, I'm going to launch a book um, and I need to understand what my upfront co cost of goods are, you know, covers and all that stuff. Um, advertising, of course, and then understanding the, the, the ROI on, on the entire project. So it looks mm -hmm. to me like, you know, if this is top secret stuff, then we can <laughs> delete this out. But it's, it's, no, we're, like transparent. Are, no, we're, we're transparent. We, okay. yeah, we're, we're working on that. We're, yeah. We're, it seems like you've got, you're building the foundation to be able yeah. to help me as an author yeah. to, to not only get organized, like with my launch, like I need to do this on the 15th, uh -huh. but a place to capture those costs. Yeah. So actually, that? 
actually, I'm I'm coding that right now. Um, and what we're doing is is we're adding an additional item that's called author expenses. And um, the author expenses allows you to define what various expenses there are. So you'll have like a list of things like um, uh, covers, editing, uh, you know, whatever it might be. Yes, yes. And so you can enter in those values, and then you can choose the um, uh, whatever book it is uh, that that you're working on. You then say it's an author expense, and you choose from that drop down. Or if it's a new item, you type in whatever that new item is, and it'll automatically be part of your drop downs in the future. And then you say how much it costs, what the date or dates are for it, and then not only will it show you against your ROI for that day or days, it will show you against the month. Mm. Uh, or you can just go right into that book and say all time, show me all time costs. And so <clears throat> here's how much I've made. You know, I made a, I've made ten thousand dollars on this book since you know last September or whatever, and I've spent two thousand on it. And, and, and that would include covers, ads, promotions. Like you know, you go to a, a BookBub or, or Bargain Booksy or Free yeah. Booksy or whatever. It would include all of that information. Right now, we just have Amazon ads and Facebook ads. But we're working on, that's what I'm coding right now is the author uh, expenses piece. And then we'll also be doing things like, you know, book club ads, uh -huh. if you're doing that. So, yeah. yes, I am working on that right now. Well, that's interesting. So, um, I, I wrote a, a blog for uh, draft to digital and it was called the launch trough. And I actually have a um, spreadsheet I create that I work with some people on that talks about like, it's just the concept of the working capital you need in any business to get to where you want to be. Right. Like, um, a lot of business guys are like, well, I want my sales to grow. So I'm going to hire salesmen and we're going to do this. Well, they don't ever think about like, okay, you hire a sales guy. He starts on day one. You got to pay him his salary, his benefits. He's got a car, all that stuff. He's got to go out and get those sales. Even if he's good, right. It takes him six, nine, 10 months to get to where he even breaks even. Mm -hmm. And I don't, that's something I'm trying to help authors understand is that launch trough that like, it's great to accept an idea and try and go after like rapid release or a series. But do you really understand that that could be, you know, from what I've experienced two, $3,000 investment, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and on top of that, you're not going to see that money back from Amazon for 60 days. Yeah. Well, and then yeah, you bake in the fact that that yeah. you know you've got you've got a very reliable payer, but they pay when they pay, right? You can't come out and say, "Dude, times are tough this week." Could you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you check check early? <clears throat> yeah, they they always do pay though. That's the beauty of it. You yes. don't have to come yeah. say, hey, no decaf last right. week. And, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. but you're you're absolutely right. Um, you know, one of the things that you know, like I said, I went full time uh, recently, and in January was my best month. But I also spent a lot of money in yeah. and I'm not going to see the uh, fruits of that until the end of March. March, yep. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you sit there and you're pulling your collar a little bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you're like, hey, yeah, this is fantastic. Yeah, but how are you going to eat in February? <laughs> so, yes, it's, it's a big deal. And I'll, the other thing I want to point out is that people don't necessarily plan. So they'll think to themselves, oh, I wrote this fantastic book. It's, you know, like I said before, my mom loves it. So it's going to be fantastic um, and, and everything. And I know I'm just going to make millions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this really, you know, fantastic cover design business. Um, and I, they will go ahead and drop everything to create a cover for me today. <laughs> and that's when you realize they say, they say, yes, we'd absolutely love to work on your book. And it's currently uh, March 5th. Uh, we'll have it done for you in August. <laughs> but I need it now. <laughs> yeah. like, well, I'm sorry. sorry like, no. And then, and then you say, "Well, I'm going to go deal with an editor while we worry about the cover." <laughs> I'll just do the cover myself. Don't do the cover yeah. yourself. Don't do the cover yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Do it yourself. You, you will do fail. It. By the way, an aerial font on the cover? Oh, no. uh, not a good idea. But then you go to an editor, and it's the same thing. But I need this edited. I'm, I'm launching next week. Well, then you should have planned three or four months ago because yeah. the editor that's reputable is four months, six months, eight months booked already. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to go out and say, well, I just need to have somebody edit it. Yeah. I'll just have my brother do it or yeah. whatever. And what's going to happen is, is you're going to get 
not a great edit. You need to find somebody who's good. And then you build that relationship with those people and you start planning ahead and realize this, like you said, this is a business. You don't yeah. start a franchise on day one just by walking in and saying, I want a franchise, but I don't want to have to pay for it. <laughs> you, know, you gotta research it. You gotta come up with the capital for it. You gotta prove that you can do this. You gotta go through all of these these struggles. And I think that's that is one of the biggest struggles that I see with a lot of authors is that their whole plan is I write a book, I build it, and they will come. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's one of the reasons why we did something like a calendar. I mean, I use it. John doesn't. I don't think he uses it. Do you, John? I use, it. <laughs> we have to use our own calendar. I but have I the one on the wall. He has one on the wall. He likes to work with. In, you know, in real life. It's the but one I, thing that I can't do on the computer. I have yeah. to. Which makes sense. And that's one of the, re but we did put it in because this is something that when you go into your author business mindset every morning, which is, you know, something hopefully if you're a working author is an all day thing, but for, for most people, it's going, you got to go into this planning, publishing, marketing phase, you know, writing as well. And having a calendar there that's book based, right? That mm -hmm. you can actually assign tasks to a specific book. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, give it a you know, give it a dollar value soon. Um, you know, promotions, etc. You can actually do that inside Reader Links. It's really super critical for me because I get to again see the big picture. I get to keep a diary in there to say what works and what doesn't. I keep a, a calendar diary um, that today I did this, and then the next day I say yesterday's thing didn't work. I got to you know, going to tweak it. So you actually get to track these things the way you really need to in any business, um, mm -hmm. especially if you're working by yourself. You don't have the salesperson. You don't have you know somebody helping you with marketing. You're doing it all by yourself. Use a calendar, and you yeah. can use a calendar. Sure, you can use the one on the wall. That's fine. But if but, but if Reader Links is uh, it has to be in Reader Links because that's a critical organizing, uh, keeping track of tasks. We have a, a feature called Core Tasks, which is the things you got to do every single time you publish. Mm -hmm. So you create a core task once, you know, uh, give editor two weeks notice. That's a core task. That core task will be for every single book that you've ever done and for every single book that you create in Reader Links. That will automatically be a task right there for you so you won't mm. forget it. You just assign it a date and, and move on. So it's a super powerful tool that you're not going to get out of, out of Google Calendar. Sure. And actually, I want to bring up, uh, that's a great point because there's the other thing called core links. And a lot of people get confused by core links, including Ben. It took him like a month. <laughs> oh my, a month. It took me like six months. But, but right. since we're talking business, this is really key because the concept of a core link, the, the term core is what we got to talk about here. It's core to your business. And so what I mean by that is this. Every time I create a book, I have to create links for my website, for my Facebook ad, for my Twitter, for newsletter, my email newsletter, signature, yep. whatever, right? So I have to create 25 links or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the thinking about that, that means when I go to create a book, I've got to go somewhere and I've got to, okay, here's the list of links and I got to painfully go through that process, which is a huge pain. And I found myself, honestly, early on, just not doing it because it was such a pain. I'd say, oh, I can get away with just five and I'll just, eh, whatever. Well, now I can go into the core links area of, of reader links and I just say, I do it one time. Here are all the things that I want to do, my website, my Twitter, whatever. I do them all one time. I can say, these are allowed to have affiliate codes. These are not allowed to have affiliate codes, et cetera. I can do all of it. I just do it once. Mm -hmm. And then when I create a brand new book, just imagine a little robot going in there and saying, oh, here are all these links that this guy wants me to put in this book for him. And so it creates all of those links for me in one shot. Now all I have to do is go into that book, click on the link, uh, the book links tab, and I see immediately all of my fresh brand new links with their own uh, unique IDs for that book. And all I have to do is right click it and put it on my website. I'm done. Yeah. So it saves so much freaking time. Yeah. And, um, and if I say, you know what, I need a new core link. Uh, for something. And I mean, I'm going to have to go through all these books. I have 50 books. I don't want to do that. No, you just go into core links, you add a brand new core link, it automatically adds them to all 50 of your books. Oh, with, nice. Nice. You, you know, it's own unique ID for that book. That so is. that's what core tasks does and core links does just for a different. Okay. Know, well, on that core task thing, are you guys familiar with the theory of constraints? No. Mm -mm. Okay. So there's a book, uh, it's called the goal. It's was written like in the eighties. And in the um, uh, uh, manufacturing industry, it's almost like a Bible. And this guy uh, talked about, uh, he's the guy that came up with the concept of bottlenecks. And 
the, the, you, the, the, theory, the theory of constraints is, is that you design your business off that one bottleneck, right? You can't be any more efficient than that one bottleneck. So you get the whole business in harmony with the bottleneck, and then you try and incrementally improve the bottleneck, and then your business just excels, and you're not having to deal with all the fits and starts. So it's, it's really out of kind of manufacturing, but it's, it's gone all kinds of places. Anyhow, um, Craig and I talked in a different vi video about the theory of constraints for authors, okay? So like the bottleneck in your business, and this gets back to what Ben was talking about, the bottleneck should be your writing time. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> right? It shouldn't be that, yeah. oh shit, I forgot to get yeah. an editor, right? Like you need to, like the, the thing that's totally in your control is your writing time and is contingent on like where you are in your career. So like if you're a part-time writer, you're, you're figuring your thing out. That's cool. But then you have to build ahead and behind all that other stuff. And I think that there's probably something you guys have here where um, you can start to think about, um, you know, how to help authors think that way, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, because, it, you know, we all, life comes and gets in our way all the time and yeah. your plans is when you think a book's going to be out, but then to, know that, okay, yeah, it's going to be a little bit later because I take longer to write. Mm -hmm. I don't have to redo my whole schedule, right? Yeah, no, that's a great point. I love that idea. It actually gives me an idea, John. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Just, just, just remember, I am the bottleneck. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. that's sometimes true. Well, yeah, if you want to keep that train moving, you got to write the next one, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So... Uh, where are you guys, you know, you're, you're in touch with a lot of authors. You're, you're, you're seeing a lot of stuff going on um, either through the data or just, you know, people you're working with. Where do you see kind of the whole landscape going for uh, indie publishing? It's probably uh, small publishers uh, popping up like crazy. You know, I would imagine that people are going to more and more uh, group together into, into imprints. Um, mm -hmm kind of grow their audiences together. Um, that would certainly be, so, you know, in my mind, a good business move. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I start, so, I mean, we're already seeing evidence of that just in the people who are trying to take advantage of, or are taking advantage of reader links. Yeah. Uh, some of them are a little bit too big for us, um, but there are quite a few who are, who are um, customers who are, they're, they're, the, thing, the things that they're asking for are, are kind of interesting. You know, they, they really have, they have everything to do with, um, with kind of building a stable of authors that, uh, you know, either know each other from what my research is, I think yeah. who are actually, you know, buddies, um, uh, in the same genre and similar genres. And, um, they're, they're going to, I have a feeling that's where things are going to head more and more. Mm -hmm. That'd be my guess. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we are getting uh, publishers talking to us and saying, Hey, we, I want to, you know, handle all of my authors through you. I know a couple of people who said, Hey, um, you know, I'm a publisher, uh, as well as an author, and they're friends of mine, and they're saying, you know, I'd like to bring your books under my publishing, and I'm like, no, but um, <laughs> it, it's not because of them per, uh, personally, it's just yeah. that I have a different business track uh, mm -hmm. trajectory of where I want to go um, with that, and, and obviously, um, you know, you have to recognize that being a publisher is a hell of a lot more difficult than you probably think it is, and uh, so as they're, I'm, I'm going to still do all my books. I'm like, and how many authors are you going to have under this publishing? Yeah, probably about ten. That's what I'm aiming for. <laughs> 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 You're not getting any sleep anyway. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so I think that it it would have to be people who are dedicated to it, and I do yeah. think that you know from a they're business there. side, there are people who are going. Hmm, You're one of them, right? I mean, you well, yeah. I mean, you take how can I manage authors? Yeah. And, and such. And also the other thing I'm seeing is uh, popping up all over the place, not necessarily publishers, um, but personal assistance uh, uh -huh. businesses. Um, and we do support that already, but uh, personal assistants are popping up everywhere and yeah. saying, Hey, I do this now. And so they don't, they, they help you run your business. Yeah. Yeah. They don't actually take responsibility for your business. Uh -huh. um, and so it's not, you know, whereas the publisher is, is trying to, to go down that road. So, um, it, it is, I, I see that happening as far as, uh, you know, what is it, where are we going as far as, uh, actually making money as authors and so on? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I, that's a really tough question because, you know, it, there's always this uh, thing that goes back and forth between going wide and just being on KDP select right now. KDP select is killing it. I mean, 
um, it's making a lot of money. And a lot of people who were wide have left and come to KDP Select and they found that their income has doubled or tripled uh, by doing so. Um, <clears throat> the, the problem that you have there, I'm, I'm in that boat, frankly, the problem that you have there is that at any moment, they can say, oh, we were paying 0 0.005 per page, now we're paying 0 0.003. Boom, there goes your income. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it drops really quick. Or they decide, uh, you know what, we now are gonna require a six month and we're still only gonna give you the same perks that we gave before, because they can. Mm -hmm. they, they're, they're that big. Uh, you hope they won't get that predatory, but if it happens, you know, what are you gonna do? And that's yeah. the thing. Authors are really at the mercy right now of Amazon. Yeah. Uh, and if you really want to make a living at this, you're at the mercy of, of Amazon. Unless you're willing to do things beyond, um, uh, you know, just the standard stuff. And that means you start, uh, you know, selling on your own site. And I think this is what we're going to start seeing a lot more. Yeah, of. I agree. I think, <clears throat> I think we're going to see things like where people go, you know what? I'm going to start selling on my own site a, a lot more than I am today. I, I'm going to not just link people to Amazon, but instead mm -hmm. I'm going to sell, uh, oh, here, I'll give you an example. I, I started doing this um, uh, for, for my, uh, one of my series, so I don't know if you can see this, yeah. but this is the little badge that I had created. Um, actually, one of my readers gave me the idea, and it's, it's a nice, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's really nice stuff, and um, people were, I, I did it, and then I put out a post for it, and I said, anybody interested in this? And I got <laughs> a ton of people saying, mm -hmm. I want this. Now, my wife, she does chain mail, uh, jewelry, and such like that. So I started saying, okay, what does my main character happen to wear? Wear, yeah. And uh -huh. so people started buying those. Hold it back up here. We, had, we jumped from screen to screen. Oh, oh sorry. So um, there we go. It, it's okay. basically, it's, it's called a mala bracelet. Mm -hmm. And so one of the characters uh, wears a mala bracelet. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> wears a mala bracelet in order to transport and all this kind of stuff. So we started looking at it and saying, you know, a lot of my characters do wear these certain things. My wife can create these certain things or you can get them created somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Um, and make it part of my universe. So publishers do this. I mean, yeah. you know, there's, there's board games for different things. There's, you know, game Plus of Plus you have the coffee thing, right? Yeah, right. There's exactly. That was the other thing um, that, that I recently did. Um, I don't know if you've been seeing ads on Facebook for Bones Coffee. I don't know. Uh, I haven't. No. Okay. But so Bones Coffee, they have these really cool packaging, uh, this really cool packaging where they put like skeletons and stuff all over there and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I saw it and it was perfect for, for my main character to drink this particular type of coffee because it was <laughs> bourbon barrel, barrel aged coffee. And he's kind of, you know, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I, I contacted him. I said, I'd like my character to do this. Do you have any problem with me doing that? And they were like, no, this would be fantastic. I've already seen your books up on you know, Amazon, so this would be really cool. And I was like, this is sweet. So they ended up sending me some stuff. And then I asked, can I get a coupon code for my fans? They gave me a coupon code. Yeah, so nice. I shared that with my fans. And now my fans are, are and, and it's not that I'm, I'm not making money on that. But, but here's the thing. What happens is, is it shows loyalty to my fans that I'm trying to help them with stuff. Mm -hmm. They, they want to buy some designer coffee and stuff like that, and I get them 20% off because they're using my stuff. Yay, they're happy about that. Um, doing those types of things for your fans, uh, making them feel like you, you care because you do, means that they're going to be more loyal to you in the long run and everything anyway. So now I, I, know, I, I know one author um, – who shall remain nameless because he doesn't like to have all this stuff, you know, publicized and stuff. But I know one author who exclusively sell, sells on his website only. And he does it the old method. I don't know if you remember games like Doom and Quake and all that, but he does it the old method. What he does is he says, I'm giving the book away. It's free. You can have it. But if you'd like a signed copy of it, if you'd like to support me so I can continue giving you free books, Buy a signed copy of the book. I will go ahead and blah, 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 and ship it. And the guy's making over $100,000 a year doing this. Yeah. And that's... It's a shareware model. It's yeah. a shareware model. And mm -hmm. that's what he's doing. So my point is, is that there are ways to make money beyond Amazon. And I think that authors are going to start exploring that more and more as they start realizing that Amazon's got you by the cojones. And at mm -hmm. any moment they decide, ah, we don't want to work with you. And we've seen this happen to authors for whatever reason. They just say, you know what? We think you're getting some click farm thing going on here. We're going to cancel your yeah. account. And, you've, and you're legitimately yeah. getting these yeah. clicks. And then you have to a three-month battle to try to get your yeah. account back. You get it back. But by then, the damage is so far gone, you're screwed. Yeah. 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 
So yeah, that's, that's what I think is going to happen. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, you know, I, um, I've, I've talked about this before that, you know, we're really in this golden age of content creation, mm-hmm. right? And you've got some, some interesting wins that prevail as an indie publisher because Amazon, Netflix, uh, iTunes, all these guys, they have created ecosystems and platforms, but they don't necessarily have the content that they need to put through them. So as an author, if you can figure out how to make more of these rivers of cash, like you're talking about, um, whether it's merchandising or creating more content or, you know, folks that are looking at, you know, movies or audio books, whatever it might be, there's really a good opportunity now to do that. And you only have to look at like the guys that are, have perfected this model is Disney. Right? Uh-huh. Like when w- the funny thing is you hear a lot of authors talking about this, this mill that they're on of having to produce content. It's like, yeah, that's part of it is you're building your audience. But let's remember also like, Disney has been selling the same stuff over and over again for a hundred years, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, Cinderella isn't just that old movie that Disney made himself, right? Like there's tween knockoff shows. There's the stuff at, at, at Disney world, Disneyland, California, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's breakfast. It's (laughs) but So it's really where you're prepared to let your mind go to test out those markets, whether it's like your badges or jewelry or, um, you know, the, the heart of that though is something you mentioned and that's the fan, mm-hmm. right? That's the demand. If you don't take care of that, mm-hmm. um, cause I think that that, um, that's one thing that, uh, you'll be able to reattach to if something bad does happen with Amazon, right? As you, That's right. If you have that fan base, you can, you, you, you both can adjust to that new place that you're, you need to yeah. be. You have them on Facebook, you have them a newsletter, you know, there are ways to, to kind of have more control mm-hmm. and definitely need to take full advantage of that stuff. That's the foundation. I think that's the first thing that any author should do is they should, you know, build that fan base before they start, you know, trying to, you know, make a living out of this thing. Try mm-hmm. to find try to find those readers, see that they're responsive to you, find a way to relate to them on newsletters or Facebook or whatever, and uh, and go from there. Because that's what you're going to be standing on once Amazon does make those decisions. Mm-hmm. Or Facebook makes those decisions to change the way they do ads, you know. There's a lot of dependent, a lot of stuff that we depend on that could change at any moment. And we just have to make sure we're covering our butts. Yeah. Well, and with them, you know, with both of those companies, like they're trying to, to do the best that they can do for everybody. Right. Like mm-hmm. they don't want to screw authors over. They don't want to ruin this thing, but all it takes is one guy to do some dumbass move mm-hmm. thinking he's making it better for everybody. Right. Yep. And you guys are from the software industry. You know how easy that could be. Right? Oh, yeah. One yeah. Bad line of code and we're all like homeless. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right? It was really sad as we laughed at being homeless. <laughs> no, I was, I was I was laughing at the idea of praying to the QA gods. <laughs> please, please catch it, catch, catch it. it. Yeah, <laughs> like and that, like they'll send a nice email and they'll say they're sorry, but it's not. Right. Like they're not yeah. gonna. They're not gonna replace that money. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, um, <clears throat> when we talk about, you know, uh, owning, owning the fan is really what we're talking about here, owning the reader. Um, and, and this does come, uh, you know, from what I learned uh, from Mark's course, you know, Mark Dawson, what I was saying before. And that is that, um, you know, building that newsletter, building that, uh, th- that community. Now, uh, with, with what I had learned from that was really building the newsletter side of things. And the interesting piece about building a newsletter is that people think, uh, they sign up, and all I do is I just send them when I release books. That's not the case. Um, the idea is that you have to cultivate that relationship as if you cultivate a friendship. It's the mm. same thing. Um, you have to really plan that way. The other thing that I personally have uh, done taking this further is in every one of my newsletters, I say, hey, join me on Facebook on my group because we talk about things more real time there. We share you know, stuff to make each other laugh. We have a good time, et cetera, et cetera. And that brings a lot of people from the newsletter to that. So now I have dual zones where I can do stuff. So I still send out a newsletter every couple of weeks that basically says, hey, here's the, you know, what's going on. 
um, oh, by the way, I read this book by this author or, or what have you. Um, this particular friend of mine just released this. You should check it out. It's not all me, me, me. Mm. It's about letting them realize just like any friend, it's like, you know, you, you don't go to a friend and basically say, Hey, we're going to get pizza and that's all there is to it. And then your friend, you don't, you're, you don't care what your friend thinks. You know? <laughs> um, instead you say, Hey, I, I heard this really cool pizza place, but I know you like burgers and there's this other joint. Then all of a sudden they start realizing that, you know, you care about them. And then at that point, they, the next time they're going, yeah, I do like the, the, the burger joint, but let's go get the pizza. Mm. You know? So when you do mention pizza, they're more apt to go do that. Yes. Yeah. The same concept yeah. of, of, of your books is that if every single time, which I'm kind of guilty of lately because I've been releasing books so, so fast often fast that I feel like I'm just writing to them and saying, buy my book, buy my book. And I, I have to, you know, I have to curb that. So what I did was I said, here's a free book. It's all yours. You know, have mm -hmm. fun uh, kind of a thing. But I want them to understand because I do feel this way that, you know, they are my backbone. They are the thing that, that comes into my Starbucks and buys coffee every day. I want to treat them right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I do appreciate them. And so I, I want to, to tell them, uh, you know, come into this group and we can have real time fun here. Uh, so that way, when you do receive a, a newsletter from me telling you about another book that I've got coming out, it's not just going to feel like that's the only time I care. The only time you love me is when you have, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't want them to feel that way, but having, Owning those readers as the term owning, but you know, having those readers in your own ecosystem, that's a critical, super mm. important yeah. because like we said, if Amazon one day or whomever one day just goes boom and they knock the, the crap out of all of us, which I hope they would never do. But if they do, you have nothing to fall back mm. on if you don't mm. have a list and yeah. you don't have that community already built. You have nothing. Yeah. Mm. So don't want to go there. And a lot of authors, it's amazing. They're like, oh, I'm making so much money. Cool. Who are your readers? I don't know. They just want to book. Oh, you are so screwed. <laughs> well, the other one on that same vein that I've seen um, and I've learned a little bit about is, you know, authors talking about they have this list, a large list, and, um, you know, most of these people never buy from me and they just want free books. And, um, you know, I've taken a little different approach to that because what I've learned is, is that from places like Insta Freebie and BookFunnel, I have found customers that are avid fans and want to read my book and are buying my book. But there's also an audience of people that because of their own life circumstances, they can't afford to buy books, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and, but they, but if you reach out to them as a kind of a smaller segment of that audience and nurture that and understand that like, Hey, they're on a fixed income or they've got disabilities and they're there to give you reviews They can help you edit. They can help you, um, you know, with your social media and what is it going to cost you a free book? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely, 100% yeah. agree yeah. with you. Yeah. So one of the things in Reader Links that we do is we have a thing called Reader Teams. And a Reader Team is basically uh, our term for, for advanced reader copies and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. What we do is we allow you to track who's doing what. Mm -hmm. And they can report to you right inside of – so so in your book, you go to your, your book, you go to the Reader Teams, and you create a page that basically says – Here's what the book is about. Here's when I'm going to deliver it to you. Here's when I expect it back. And then you know, here's any rules that you might have, et cetera. So they sign up for it. And let's say that you get 100 people to sign up for your reader team for book A, right? Mm -hmm. And now you go through book A and these people, um, they get a free copy of your book. And, <clears throat> but they're doing something. They're either uh, reporting issues, answering questions you as the author have asked them, uh, sharing the information online somewhere for you, or providing a review. You can't require that they provide a review that's against the terms of service for, for Amazon, but mm -hmm. you can make it a requirement to do one of these things to participate. In other words, you must participate in my group. You don't yeah. have to do this particular one, but you have to participate somehow. And so then what happens is they start submitting things. I, there was one author, again, I'm not gonna name this particular guy because he'd be like, dude, but, <laughs> um, but here's the deal, he got over two thousand issues oh yeah yeah and he was like oh crap and so we had to go through and fix that now i usually get around 200 issue reports on a book yeah. Yeah. and then when i hand it over to my editor my editor's like this is one of the cleanest books you've done 
yeah. I can score. Yeah. So these people are helping me edit my book, and I don't have to create a, a Google sheet. I don't have to get an email. I don't have to deal with you know sending it through this. That it's all done right on Reader Link, so I can just track it right there. Take care yeah. of it. I can break it down by chapter. I can do the whole yeah. thing. Nice time to market. Time to market improves immeasurably, not just on the editing front, but just, yeah, getting that, getting even the, for me, what it's done is it's, allowed, it's given me energy because feel, seeing readers actually respond to a pre-release is just, it just is so inspiring and energizing. So, uh, you know, I've been, I've been writing faster and releasing faster, mostly because of the, uh, of the reader teams. Yeah, of and course, we, we all share our same reader team, so they're yeah. all going, dudes, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. Too much. But the yeah. one thing that, uh, that uh, uh, John, I just want to add to that is that you know, from reader team to reader team, from book to book, you can track the participation of the, of the people. So that if they don't participate and they are just freeloading and they're really not helping, then you have to have a conversation with them or you just yeah. have to. You know, we, we make it polite in the reader links thing. You know, if you project them, it's just like, well, it looks like this is closed. You know, reach out to the author if you think there's been a mistake or, or something like that. Yeah, we, we don't say sorry. Turns out you're a deadbeat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't do anything like that. But it's <laughs> because when you get to book C, you know, then and you're you're getting these applications, like Ben said, you can look back and you can see, it, yeah. well, you don't even have to look back. When you see, you know, Ben has applied for your group, I can scroll right down and I can go, here's the past participation that Ben has done. Yep. Now, it, it could be that, you know, he did nothing. Yeah. And so I'm like, nope. Or yeah. it could be uh, he participated by, by uh, reporting issues. He didn't leave a review, but so what? He yeah. participated by answering my questions. Or I have a notes section where I go, I saw Ben do, you know, multiple shares on Facebook for me. So whatever it is, I can track. And so that way I can say, you know, yes, you can get in. Now, what you were saying about the person in the newsletter, those people are who you reach out to and you say, mm -hmm. hey, you know, you should join my reader teams. So that way in the future, you get the book free and you can participate as you already have. And as long as you continue participating with me, you get the books. And so yeah. you are getting paid because there's a lot more money coming from a person giving you issue reports, sharing your sharing. content, yeah. doing a review, whatever. There's a lot yeah. more money than just the two ninety nine or three ninety nine you're going to sell that book for. Mm. Yeah. That's true. No, I'm a hundred percent agreement. I think that that's you know one of the the real strengths of being a, an, an indie author is is that you you have the ability to do what you want with this content, right? right? You decide what the value is, and when you understand like what you just explained, like that's that's way more valuable than two ninety nine. No, you're right. That's the word value. I said money, but yeah. value is correct. Yes. Yeah, that you can you can you can you can make those decisions and understand that okay, especially with the, this content. Like it's that's the beauty of content is once it's created, that cost is sunk, and you can keep reselling it and reselling it, and it's perpetual and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I see a lot of authors like, oh, I'm on this grist mill. I got to keep putting out these books. It's like, well, you do have to keep your audience happy with additional content, but you also need to think that there's, there's new fans to go out and find. That's mm -hmm. right. Like Disney, know, back in the old days before VHS and that, they had the vault, right? Every seven years, they issued those movies again because mm -hmm. they knew there was a new generation of kids that had never seen the movie and their parents were going to bring them because they had the memories from when they saw it when they were a kid. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right. Evergreen. <laughs> Ever, right? Like, Evergreen content. Yeah. And that, that just because you're indie doesn't mean your content's any different. Yeah. No, it's at, that's actually a wonderful point. And, and I'm totally guilty of not doing that. I, I it's funny. Um, I, I, I write in way too many series. I have too many books already out there and I have way too many planned. And so what happens <laughs> is, is that it's not that I'm always chasing the latest. It's that um, <clears throat> whenever I start uh, thinking about, you know, okay, I've got to go b and, and promote this older stuff. I end up going, Oh boy, we're not going to find time to do that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you start thinking about it and you go, and then you look at, but I have to do these three ads for what's hot today. And it's hard to think about, you know, working on stuff that's back here because of the support, you know, issue that you have to go through in order for that to happen while you have this hot product up here. Mm. But another thing that's really interesting about it is that I will look at a book that, you know, I wrote four years ago and, and it, it had its heyday. It was doing great. And now all of a sudden it's kind of, you know, petering off or whatever, but I'll get 
like a dollar a day from that, right? Just that one book, a dollar a day. And it's like 30 bucks, $365 a year. But I'm like, score. I wrote that yeah. four years ago. Yeah. yeah. And I'm making 365 bucks a year yeah. on it, yeah. you know, yeah, which is really great. Yeah. But, but you're absolutely right. And I, uh, I honestly never really thought about that. So that, thank you for that. That's, that's a, that's a good piece of, of information because I am getting those covers redone actually. So I am planning to relaunch it, but I never really considered, Hey, every couple of years. Yeah. Brand new. Yeah. New yeah. Well, it's that's something I, I, I talked about at this conference, um, was like, have a strategy around that. Like you've got old books is like, is it, the, is it, it's five year anniversary. Yeah. Right. Like, is there, there's, and this gets back to what we were talking about earlier. It's okay. Then is there a relaunch? Is there a special hardcover edition you put out? Because you may have fans that are like, Oh man, I'll pay, I'll pay 50 bucks for that book. You know, That's if great. I know there's only a hundred of them made. That's a great idea. Right. Yeah. Like there's things that you can do to celebrate those books and to bring them back to life. And, um, and it's not like we have to really invent a bunch of ideas. We just need to look and see how great content companies like Disney make this yeah. stuff work, right? Like, why, why would they pay $4.3 billion for the Marvel series? And it's like, yeah. that was the biggest steal yes. they could have ever made, right? Like, that was amazing. Right? And, yeah. and you offset that against Stan Lee created all of that content in a matter of what, maybe 15 years mm -hmm. and was paid per page. He yeah. drew, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's, it's yeah. crazy. It's right? great. Like, yeah, but that's what it, that you're right. There's a lot of, lot of, um, spigots to mm -hmm. fill, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. and they, they're doing everything they can to, to find content. Yeah. And, you know, look, look at, look at Stephen King. He made more money this year off books. He wrote 20 years ago. Mm, really? And, well, look, Oh, power. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. All, like, okay. I mean, no one wants to read his new stuff. He's like, too, yeah. everyone, it's like, they don't like his politics or they love his politics. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. but his old stuff. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. true. Right. Like, yeah, back then he didn't have politics. We can read that. <laughs> <laughs> trying to scare the shit out of you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> politics of fear. Yeah. But that, that's my kind of my, what gets me excited in this world is like, the, mm. you know, the whole thing's been democratized. So guys like us can go and create content, find mm. those fans, and then create, you know, really cool stuff around it. And, you know, anybody that's ever been to a Comic Con in the last, you know, couple years that used to go to them, mm -hmm. you know, 20 years ago, right? It's like that first Comic-Con in San Diego was like in a Holiday oh. Inn, right? Yeah. Like oh, yeah. now what, what movie company wouldn't have a massive presentation there? Yeah. Uh, right? Okay. Based on what you just said, it's kind of embarrassing, but based on what you just said, <laughs> I found this in a box the other day and I have been playing it relentlessly. Oh no. My Nintendo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure, now, man. I found it. I was cleaning out stuff and I found yeah. this in the box and I was like, oh, oh my God. And I swear I must have spent four hours playing this thing over the last week. But, um, Mario, right? And and then I, I, okay, this is even more embarrassing. No, no, no. As, actually, it was um, Asphalt Urban. Uh, it was a racing game, and I also have Tactics Ogre in here. Even more embarrassing. I realized that I'm too old for this little screen. You can't see so it. What did I do? I went out and bought a Game Boy 2D XL, the larger one, and so now that's why this is back in a box because now I can see the screen again. <laughs> that, because I found that in a box, you know, and I had this what, 20 years ago. Yeah. Over. I am now, I went out and reinvested money. I spent $150 on a new one so I could play a game I loved that long ago. Yeah. And it's worth it because I'm playing and I'll be playing it for the next year. Mm. But, but that's, that's just straight up to your point. Now, I have a question for you, though. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So here I am. Uh, I have, you know, 50 plus books. I have a release schedule that's ridiculous. Um, because you know I'm, I'm keeping the business going. I'm doing rapid release right now. It will slow down, but for right now, I'm doing rapid release and um, so on. And so now I'm looking, and I am getting the, the book covers redone for the old series and so on, uh, which would be really cool. But, okay, now you're saying, you know, it's the cool idea, though, the five-year anniversary, you do the hardcover and everything else. Great. 
when am I going to have time to do that? That's the, team. <laughs> That's the biggest yeah. struggle is that we release so much content where Disney does too. The difference is, is that Disney says, all right, we're going to hire 50 people just to do that. Mm-hmm. And so that's their job. Whereas most of us independent authors, it's but us. We, yeah, but we right. still need to build a team, right? I mean, no. Yeah, but, but there's a difference between building a team and paying a team. And <laughs> when you're, not, you're not quite making that much money to pay the team yet, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I, this, this gets to something we were kind of talking a little bit before we turned the record on. And that's like, you, because you're creative and you've got a lot, I mean, you probably thought of two or three things while we've been talking that it's like, oh, that could be a whole new product or a new project. Totally, <laughs> right? like totally. it's, you can't chase those butterflies. And you have to, at some point, you have to step back and be the CEO of your business and say, this is the plan, right? Yep. And yep. that means uh, hard choices. So you may want to say, okay, well, as I'm going into plan 2019, because 2018's locked, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to set aside some time to uh, reinvigorate my old library. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take a chunk of that because this gets that constraint thing. I've only got so much time in a, that I can do this. So I need to test this out. Is, it, is there value to extract out of that stuff? So I'm going to do this project. I got this book. It's coming up for a five year. And I'm going to go you know, do a hardcover limited edition. That means that some of your new releases are going to drop off. You just can't, they're not going to be 2019. They're going to be 2020. Mm -hmm. It's, I think that's the, it's, it's not the answer you want to hear. You want to hear, well, there's this magic pixie dust that if you sprinkle, (laughs) elves will come in and write your books. Wait, there's not? No. no. (laughs) In your books, there is. In our books, exactly. (laughs) Um, so I, that's just what you have to do, right? You have to, you have to say, this is the business plan and stick to it. Yeah. And then from that, you'll learn like, oh man, this actually worked really well. And so I'm going to build that in. And, you know, the great thing about what you guys have here in your product is those can become, you can go build in that rejuvenation track in your product, right? Like mm-hmm. you're, you've been thinking about it from the whole launch perspective, but what, mm-hmm. what happens you know, year two, year three with that book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? That's a great point, actually. And, and, you know, I guess it comes back to, you know, what we, what we were saying a little bit before, and that is, uh, you know, right now it's just you. But then uh, if, you, if you pay attention to the business side of things and you go down the proper paths, you do the proper research and, and everything else, then it becomes the ability to pay for the team to start doing that. So you go yes. back to the creativity side. You never want to release it. Um, release the the management of what you're doing. Like you said, you have to be your own CEO. This is one thing that I've seen authors unfortunately do is that, oh, I get to be creative again and I don't have to worry about the business. Somebody else is worrying about that. That's dangerous mm-hmm. because yeah. it's your yeah. business. Yeah. And um, if that Amen. person knows what's best for what they think is best for your business and it's not, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So you, you always have to be responsible for your business, but it doesn't mean that you have to necessarily deal with the day-to-day um, aspects of it, as long as you are very aware of what's going on and, and so on. Uh, I think it could be useful. But to get to that point, you're right. You, you do have to. And, and hey, this is something that, that Ben and I talk about all the time. So I'm, uh, again, I'm guilty of not following my own advice. But um, it, is that uh, it's not just about writing. It's a lot more. Writing is a very small por- portion of it, as long as you're good at writing. Right? If, you, if you do it well and people like what you do and so on, then you, you have a chance of being a success but only if you take that other 90% of your life and dedicate it to making it a success of the 10% that actually got you there. Mm. Yeah. No, it's very true. I mean, it's, it, it's a struggle that, um, you, that everybody faces in this. Um, you have to wear multiple hats. Yeah. Right? And it's, it's, gonna, it's a very schizophrenic situation because the things that you have to think and do as a CEO – are going to probably contradict what you want to do as a creative, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And um, you, you have to think about this as a business. You know, when I talk to folks, it's about, you know, what you're doing around your um, IP portfolio to protect it and make sure that you're getting the most out of that because those are the assets. Mm-hmm. Like how, you, how are you creating rivers of cash? How are you creating wealth, right? Like mm-hmm. you got to get money off the table 
and get that into a retirement account and do other stuff because guess what? Nobody else is going to take care of you. You're working for yourself now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and if you do all those things, then yeah, you can have a really prosperous career, but you can't, you know, if you think it's just going to be sitting around writing books on the beach, then you yeah. just got it so wrong. Yeah. Uh, unless so you win the lottery. If you win the lottery, if you win the book lottery, Amazon lottery, you, it's possible, but don't. Yeah. Do don't. yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. It's just like winning the actual lottery. Good luck. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, frankly, if I won the lottery, I wouldn't be spending a whole lot of time writing books. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be spending more time reading them. Yeah. But, um, right. Yeah. But, 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 you know, it's here's something that's that's uh, can be very uplifting for a lot of people who are afraid of this, and that is number one, it's at your own pace. You don't have to to make it happen instantly. For example, one of the things that my wife and I did was we said, you know what, we don't need to have the house that's costing us three thousand dollars a month. So we we downsized. We paid off all of our debt while I was working. You know, we paid off all of our debt. We got smart ahead of time and said, what is an income that we can comfortably live on um, and, you know, that, that we're confident we can make with the books and, you know, with uh, her editing and stuff like that. What is that income? What do we need? And so we then downsized nicely. I mean, we didn't go to like a dump or anything. We downsized nicely. We paid off our debt. We put money in the bank to prepare. And we took a few years to do this. Um, and step one was sell the big house. You don't need it. Mm. You know, you don't have to keep up with the Joneses, right? If you want the big house that's huge to you, great. That just means that your marketing plan or your business plan is going to have to support that. <laughs> our, business, our, our business plan was to support living comfortably, but not living extravagantly. Now, if we make more than that, great. We can go on more trips. We can do things that way, you know, uh, that we want to do. We want to travel more, for example. I'd rather spend money on travel uh, mm. as, a, as a goodie than spend money on a $3,000 house I don't need. Right. And so on. I don't need to have a Mercedes when a Honda will do. You know what I'm saying? I'm yep. driving from point A to point B. Now, anyway, the, the, here's my, my uh, argument over all of that. Take your time to build your life around a sustainable way. That way, when you are making your income, your targets are hitting that. Number one. Number two is recognize that the majority of authors out there aren't going to do this. Which means we, while we say, oh, look at all the millions of books that have been released this year. Yeah, but of those million books you know, that have been released this year or whatever, 999,000 of those books are probably done by people who aren't going to actually do a business. Mm -hmm. you know, they are just people who are, are thinking, build it and they will come. Mm -hmm. Whereas the rest of us, we are in this for the long haul, which means those people are going to die off over the course oh, of yeah. time. And which means readers are going to recognize that. And if readers like what you do, they're going to see the longevity yeah. and they're going to stick with you over the course of time. So this business side of things and building your whole business concept and everything else, you're, you're part of the minority. You're not part of the majority here, which means you can last longer. Absolutely. You're sticking with but, uh, so uh, at the end of last year, I offered to a bunch of authors, anybody that um, wanted help with the launch, I would help them plan out their launch it's because I want to test this launch trough model that I had built. And I had, you know, about 10 people put their hand up and say they wanted to help. Out of that 10 people, zero, zero followed through. Wow. Okay. So to your point is that um, mm -hmm. really taking this serious as, as an author, that, that, that's a real small margin of people that are out in this industry that are doing it. Yeah. yeah. Before, before you clicked record, we had this uh, basically a little bit of a conversation on this and I'll, I'll just reiterate it pretty quickly here and I'll, I won't use the expletives though. Um, but uh, what, what ended up happening uh, for me was I was giving, um, uh, I was consulting to authors to help them to, to build their stuff and everything else. And I ended up refunding money to people because they don't listen. Uh, to things. And then I ended up being very hard nosed about it. And I didn't charge. I, I, I only word of mouth people, only people who were recommended to me that I would help. And I ended up helping a, a small group of people um, who shall remain nameless, but uh, Ben is one of them because, you know, he's on this call. But um, so there are five of us in this uh, little group. And um, basically, that's only because five people were the only ones who actually followed through. Now, all 
five of those people are making right. income at this point. One of those uh, people, uh, one, one of the one of them is uh, making probably more than most people make. Uh -huh. and the other one is making more in a month than most people make in a year. <laughs> and that's because they listened and they followed through. And then they took it further from what I taught them. They went yeah. further. They, they, it, it, it wasn't just, you know, a case of, okay, I'm just going to do what this guy says and that's it. No, they, they evolved from there. They, they uh -huh. moved on from there. Uh, and, and continue going. And now I'm learning from them, you know, the whole joke of the, the, the master becomes, master becomes the, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what ended up happening. So uh, the, the point is, is that I, I must have discussed, um, you know, I had hundred over a hundred people coming to me because I happened to be on a podcast with, you know, Mark, Mark, and, that'll do it. Yeah. And I was on <laughs> testimonial videos and so on. So people will immediately reach out and say, you're a success. So what are you doing? And, and I'll do that. And I'm kind of a helpful guy, so I tried to do that. And what I learned out of all of those people who ate up a lot of my time, um, so be prepared for this if you're an author who is successful, who ate, ate up a lot of my time asking for help and everything else, they didn't even give me the respect to follow through with what I had told them to do. Mm -hmm. And then they turned around and said they didn't know what I was talking about. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what I'm talking about because you're not doing what I've told you to do that you asked me to tell you to do this was, the, this was the joke of you know the concept of I bought the exercise videos and I sit on the couch and watch them but I'm not getting thinner <laughs> it, it, it's like you, you have to actually follow through with these things and like you said out of the 10 people zero followed through with what you said now they could be what I found the majority of the problem is is that for whatever reason people who have absolutely no experience whatsoever in this industry think they know better than you yeah. what to do when yeah. you have proven that you can make an income doing this mm. and only those who are willing to sit back and say, okay, I don't know everything. I need help. Like, like you gave me some examples today of things I hadn't thought to do. I'm not going to take those and go, well, I know better than that. I don't need to do that. No, I'm going to learn from you because if I learn from you, it's going to improve my business. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's stupid yeah. for me to just assume I know everything yeah. Uh, when, when I clearly don't. And for a person to just walk in and say, well, I, I wrote this book and therefore it's just going to sell magically. Just like, mm. well, that, that Harry Potter chick did it. Why can't I? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you know, that's wonderful. Um, and, and how many times do I get somebody like, you know, a family member or a friend who goes, gets, wait, you're making money on books. Yeah. Oh, I could write a book. Like, okay. okay. And so could right. I five years ago. <laughs> you know? but I didn't make any damn money until like, you know, two years ago because it takes a long time to understand this business. You're not just going to go in and be a car mechanic day one, never knowing how to even hold a wrench. It's not going to happen. It yeah. takes years of practice and work and dedication. Yeah. And you have to be open and willing to listen and be able to shut up your ego and accept the fact that you don't know everything. Mm. That's the key. One, one, one thing about like, Authors should understand this isn't like an author thing. So like it, it, in my, my book, one of the things I do is I go into the demographics of small business. And 80% of the businesses in the United States are supporting one family or one person, right? That's, that's what makes up those 28 million businesses. And most of the people running those businesses started those businesses because either they love what they did they lost their job and had to figure out what they were going to do, right? Mm -hmm. Or they, you know, like, they, they had this, they, they felt they could do it better on their own than they could with what, where they were working, right? So they go out and start a business, and then they're like, oh, my God, now I got a business, right? Like, I've, they didn't have any formal business training. They don't understand how to, but, like, if you learn these things, which are totally uh, learnable skills, like, you don't have to have creativity, to do this. Like they're just staples of business. If you put these things in place, then things operate better. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So I think there's, there's that piece, right? Like you can always learn those things, but then like what we were talking about a little bit earlier, I think that, um, there, you know, I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea. Those 10 people that dropped out, a lot of that is just life got in the way, mm -hmm. right? Like they're trying but like they had real plans, right? Like it's like I, I, I went to this conference and I saw this rapid release thing and I'm going to put out, you know, 10 books over this next year. And they really meant it. And then 
there was no follow through. Yeah, that's that's not meaning it quite. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. so like, but that's your competition. If you're worried about the other guy, that's most of your competition. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? It's a good point, though, when you say that life gets in the way. All right, so you work for, um, I don't know, some big company at Microsoft. Okay, so you work for Microsoft, right? Mm -hmm. If life gets in the way too much, what happens? You get fired. Yeah, they fire your ass. <laughs> yeah, right? you get fired yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so so the, the, I love the excuse of life gets in the way because, I mean, I've used it many times. And when my ass is pinned to the couch for four hours a night watching TV, life isn't in the way. No, yeah. no. I'm lazy. Yeah. Or I owe myself this, this, uh, this time because I work so hard today. I need to sit on the couch for four hours and do nothing and then go to bed early because I have such a busy day tomorrow. Okay, that's cool. But then 30 days from now when your book still isn't written, don't bitch about it because you made the choice. Uh, you know, like I said, one of the uh, people that I was working with, he said, I had to stay up until two o'clock in the morning every day writing. Then I went and caught three hours of sleep, got up, and wrote for another two hours, then went to my job, then came home, had dinner, spent two or three hours with the family, and then got right back to work. No rest. Yeah. No yeah. rest. Mm. Because I want to succeed at this. A year after doing all of that, yeah. retired. Through the roof. Yeah. Through the retired roof. Retired from his job. Doesn't have to work the job anymore. Mm. Now yeah. just does the writing, spends time yeah. with the families, has all this kind of stuff. If you're not willing to put in the effort that it takes to succeed, then it's a hobby. Well, and, yeah. or, and, learn, and to learn from the people who know, because I think that, you know, back to that point, you know, when you went from the sixth grade to the seventh grade, I mean, how were you going to learn algebra, you know, without a teacher there to teach you? And that's, that's true what I just said, but it's also one of the reasons I think we resist it, because we get out of school and, and we're supposed to kind of be adults. And I think we're supposed to know everything. We develop opinions, we develop ideas, you know. Um, and, and we kind of treat them like a blanket, like a Linus blanket. They're ours. <laughs> this is how we're going to live. And no, you got to keep learning. You got to be a student. You're a student for the, for your entire life. And if you're not, you're not learning. And if you're not learning, you're not growing. So, yeah, which, which is exactly why it's beautiful for all of us who are willing to have open minds and, and willing to, to work hard and everything else. Don't worry about your competition. They're not competition. Yeah, really. no. As a matter of fact, my quote competition are usually my biggest assets. Mm -hmm. networking is huge if you yeah. have friends who are writing in the same, same genre as you and they're just as willing to help you as you are to help them it's not a take take situation but mm -hmm. if you if you're willing to help them and they're helping you that is your other than your reader obviously it's your biggest asset that you could have they have 20,000 people who love their books you have 15,000 who love your books well there's going to be some overlap, sure, yeah. but this person is going to say, hey, I'll tell all my people about your books. You tell all your people about my books. Boom. Yeah. All of a sudden, you've got 5,000 additional readers, and so do they. Yeah, yeah this, th th that's the one core thing about this business is that, and it gets back to like how publishing got it so wrong, is yep. there isn't a finite amount of demand. It's not like we're all drilling in the same oil field here, and nope. it's going to run out. Like yep. These readers have proven time, day after day, that they can – absorb as much books as yeah. you can throw at them yeah, yeah. it's kind of scary actually I have right? no idea how they do it it took me six uh, weeks to write this and a person turns around and says two I hours an hour after i deliver i'm just like yeah, come on exactly. <laughs> 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 and then he's going, he's going, when's the next one? You're like, uh, well, yeah, but except we know it's going to be next month. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. The the schedule we're on. So. Yeah. We're not, we're not in the 15 minutes of fame world anymore either. Yeah. We're in the 15 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you have to, you know, you have to keep cultivating those relationships, but yeah, it's incredible how much, uh, how ferocious these people are with, with the reading. But you know what, you, you brought up something earlier and that was audiobooks. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of authors are, you know, still on the fence. Should I do an audio book? Here's the answer. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and the other thing is, should you do the audio book through some company? Um, I'm not going to put down any companies, uh, because they, they do fantastic jobs, but here's the thing. Um, when you're working with a place like, uh, audible, you know, they take a lot of your uh, money and, um, you only get 40%. And if you're working with a company such as, uh, like, again, I don't want to name any names here, <laughs> but if you're working with a company, we'll call it, um, that company is going to get 50% share of, of what you're doing. 
So either you, that's if you do a royalty share with them. So if you decide I'm going to pay up front, well, here's back to that cost of, of you know, your book again, because it's going to cost you anywhere between $150 and $300 per finished hour of audio work, meaning that it's been recorded and mixed and mastered. So if you have a book that's five hours, it's $1,500 roughly out of your pocket to, to have that audio book. Now, if you're only selling one book a day or one a month, that's going to take you a long time to recoup that in, mm. uh, you know, back. But if you have a popular so here's what I, I, I try to tell people. If you have a popular uh, ebook series, it's doing really well and you're getting decent reviews, you're, you're, you're selling really well and so on, it's worth it to invest in that. Now you can do the revenue split, but if you do the revenue split, number one, it's harder to find narrators, quality narrators these mm. days that'll do that because they recognize that I did a whole bunch of these books and I'm barely making any money yeah. from them because they were flops. Mm -hmm. So they're going to ask you to do uh, this. If you go, you know, with just anybody who will do it, then you're going to have reader issues because, or listener issues because listeners are going to go, man, this was terrible. I couldn't stand it. There were mouth noises. There were clicks. I could hear dogs in the background, cars mm -hmm. passing by, you know, all this kind of stuff. They want a level of professionalism. You need to have that. Or the, the, the reader was just monotone. There was no life to the story. People are now expecting that your characters will have voices, that they mm -hmm. will be... Uh, drama. They're, they're, it's more like radio plays without the yeah, yeah. at this point. Well, somebody was telling me there's um, like even some of these narrators are getting followers now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's the beauty of it. See, um, if you have a, a really solid narrator, they go from person to person. They're building their own brand too, right? So here, here's a narrator who's you know guy, I, behind me. That's a vocal booth. Um, that's what that is. So I have a full ability to do my own narration. I do it with my books, but I, but there's some I'm not going to do because I have comedic fantasy. That's more British. I can't do a British accent mm -hmm. very well. It turns out to be Australian or some crap. <laughs> but anyway, the thing is, is that, uh, the guy who does my, uh, comedic fantasy books, he is so amazingly good that other authors are coming to him and saying, can you do mine too? Can you do mine too? And um, since he is, is now, you know, trying to field all of that, what's happening is he's become in demand. So he can say to them, it's $300 per finished hour for me to do your book. Or I get a revenue split. But he looks at their reviews. He looks at where they are in their rankings and so on. It's not just a case uh, as of an author. You have to take responsibility as an author to build your books to the point where a person is willing to do a revenue share with you. Uh, if that's the way you want to go. But if you've gotten that far, chances are you've made enough money where you can pay per finished hour, and that way you collect the entire 40% instead of splitting it with somebody for seven years, mm. right? We're not talking like a, a, a one-year deal. If you sign a revenue split with Audible, with uh, ACX, uh, uh, with a, a narrator, that's a seven-year agreement that you're splitting 50%. So you're only getting 20% of it. Now, you didn't put any money up front, but okay, let's just say that you're selling, uh, you know, $20,000 a month worth of books. And, you know, that's what, $4,000 a month, and you're only getting 2,000 of it for seven years, mm. right? Or you could have spent $3,500 up in, at the front and made $4,000 a month for seven years. So I think that's the same. Yeah, I mean, that, that kind of answers your question also that we talked about before. How do you build that team? Well, audiobooks were a priority for you. So you decided that you were going to dive in, learn, learn the business, learn how it works, learn what's the best investment for you. Is it worth it? And you've, you've built a team. And I think mm -hmm. you have to do that with merchandising. You've got to do it with, you know, special, you know, whatever. It's that, that's, what, that's just how you're going to have to tackle the team building. Uh, sometimes it'll be a revenue split. Sometimes it'll be upfront money. But yeah, yeah, and that's that's business though. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're an author, if you're you know car dealership. You, you have to yeah, do yeah. that. Who's exactly. making my signs? Exactly. Who's doing my radio? Yeah, yeah. 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 You have to have a team. There's yeah. no question. You cannot do it alone. Yeah. In the long term, you cannot do it alone. No, no it's a real good point. Um, so we should probably wrap up here. Um, is there anything else you guys wanted to cover, kind of talk about um, upcoming stuff on the product? <laughs> there's a ton. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff we want to do. One of the things we know we need to, to work uh, to address uh, is the user interface uh, on Reader Links. It, it is programmery still. Mm -hmm. um, our, our Better whole, than it was. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, our whole mentality has been this. 
you can make your living room look really super great with all of this fancy furniture that you'll never sit on, or you can put a lazy boy there <laughs> and you know, you'll sell. Now that goes totally against sitting on the couch for four hours that I said, don't <laughs> but the point is this, is that, uh, reader links is, uh, you know, it is done by authors. So number yeah. one, you know, there, there was a, a game company a long time ago. I can say this now because it's, it's no, it's a defunct company, but, uh, it was uh, by gamers for gamers. And what we're doing is by authors for authors. You know, our, our goal is we are authors. We feel these pain points. We are going through these things. And when people, you know, give us suggestions for, for what can be done to improve the product, we go, oh, God, that would make my life easier. I mean, that's, it's a selfish way to look at it, but that is something that comes up. It's not like we go, oh, that would help a lot of other authors. <laughs> Honestly, it's, that would make my life easier, which means <laughs> would probably make yours easier too. Mm. Uh, so we're always thinking in that term. And so what ends up happening is we develop that tool so that we can, you know, hit as many fast points as possible to make everybody's life easier as opposed to sitting back and going, well, let's take six months and redo how this thing looks. And if we do that, that means we're not releasing these rapid, you know, uh, things that are going to allow you to make your life as a, as a business owner a lot easier. And so that's why we know we need to work on the UX. And we have been talking to somebody who's, who's been giving us some redesigned stuff and we've asked them, Make it as painless as possible for us as programmers so that we can keep releasing, you know, valued content to uh, authors as they go forward, but also, you know, mildly improving the user interface in the process of doing so. Uh, so, yeah, it, it is that, um, you know, beat up old couch maybe that you <laughs> just love to death, but you don't want to get rid of. And once you, you know, get that new couch, you're like, crap, why did I get rid of that old one? But um but we are going to try to, you know, reupholster it <laughs> over the course of time. <laughs> Maybe at some point, even put a little plastic over top of it. Um, uh, but we'll also be doing some functional stuff. You know, we'll be doing the uh, ROI, like we talked about before, where you can add, actually add custom co costs uh, to, you know, promotions, events, you know, uh, an ad, and uh, you know, an ad service that we don't uh, automatically import. Uh, you can do all of that manually. Um, BookBub uh, ads are also uh, on the near as near term as possible, uh, being able to import those ads uh, mm. and including those in the ROI. Um, I things, think it's pretty like Audible. Um, Audible we're, also, we're Audible, yeah. Uh, Apple, Barnes & Noble, Kobo. All things. of that. Yep, we're doing all yeah. that. Our, our list is probably 500 items long. Uh, to mm -hmm. be <laughs> those are the ones that are, those are the, the, the ones we are, hear a lot about. Right, but if you, if you uh, join the Reader Links group on Facebook, yeah. Um, and you, you know, we, we're very transparent. We're saying, we even ask people, we say, here are the top five things we can work on. What do you want? You guys vote and tell <laughs> yeah. us what you want. I to saw that the now. other day. Yeah. yeah. And, and interestingly, and I try to, to put in there, I say, look, working on this one's going to take us three weeks and it's a one time use only. A lot of people have asked for it, but it's one time use only. So we can either spend three weeks working on this one thing that you will literally go once. That's it or we can spend three weeks working on something you will use every single day. And amazingly, people mm -hmm. wanted the one thing where they only had to do it one time. So we're like, okay, so uh, we will do it. Um, but we are letting the community drive uh, the, you know, what's most important to them next for, for the product, even if it's at odds with what we, you know, may think is, is, uh, is the, you know, needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Within reason. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, seriously. <laughs> if they came back and say, yeah, yeah that's why I said some people have said you read you need to use, re, uh, redo the user interface, and we say no, we're not yeah. doing that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, but yeah, I, I saw I saw your look of what are you guys high? I get that. <laughs> um, th but don't don't get me wrong; those five things were curated. Yeah, very um, except for that one, we don't yeah. like. But but here's why we even curated that one on there is because other services do that one naturally, which means it's a barrier to entry for new customers to come to reader links. Yeah. That's yeah. That's important to us because yeah. if they can just click one time and it grabs all historical data, then we are, we are at parity with our competitors on that, on that yeah. side. If we say, oh, we're not going to do that, yeah. then we're not at parity, which means the barrier to entry to reader links is harder for that person. That's yeah. so that's why it was a business effective move for us to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. 
Well, this has been really informative. Um, I enjoyed talking with you guys. Um, yeah, it's fun.